All right, what the heck is up, guys? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome to another video. I have a walkie-talkie on my desk. I don't know where this came from. That's a little sus. All right, but anyways, we have real talk today. Real talk. I'm sitting at the desk. This is official. This is real talk time. So the reason we have real talk is because I'm getting a boatload of questions, like a mass titanic load of questions for a current mod list on my truck. That truck, 2017 F250, 6.7 Power Stroke Platinum. Okay. Um, so backstory: bought the truck brand new, 2017, towards the end of 17. So it's a build number two. So it has the updated connecting rods, which should be stronger, which could hold more power internally in the engine. Whew. But anyways, I use the truck commercially as a hotshot rig in the oil field. The truck has been absolutely put through its paces, and I always see comments, Pavement Princess, you never use your truck, bro. That truck, never seen, third, never worked. Wrong, false. And with that being said, it has 86,000 miles on the clock, and I have been messing with the truck ever since I got it brand new. If you guys are also new here, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Um, so anyways, I am good buddies with Dan down at SPE, the mad scientist behind the kind of uh, whole performance oriented slash problem solving situations with the 6.7 Power Show. So I am lucky enough to have been able to test and work with parts and work with him and test parts and, you know, kind of be behind the scenes in the whole inner workings of the 6.7 Power Show industry. Right now the truck is running about 700 and... Oh, look at this. I have a dyno sheet right here. Okay, so right now the truck is running 721.7 horsepower to the wheels and 1378.8 torques, horse torques, torque, pound feet, foot pounds. Is it pound feet or foot pound? You hear people say pound feet, you hear people say foot pound, you hear people say horse torques. <laughs> um, if you guys haven't checked out that video where we ramped up a serious tune on the truck on the dyno, um, I'll link it somewhere. It'll be up there maybe or over here or, or in the description. I don't know. Um, so yeah, anyways, currently that's what the truck is running. It is at 721 horsepower and it is a ripper. I have been hammering the absolute life out of this truck and it has been taking it. The only thing that I'm seeing a little hesitant is the transmission. Uh, yeah, yeah. So the other day, um, cruising down to the old Starbucks, you know, uh, get a coffee because I'm basic, right? And uh, been hammering it. So on the highway, just giving her the juice and a little bit of slippage happened. So yeah, we're probably gonna have to do the transmission coming up soon, but I'm sure if you drove like a normal human being, you wouldn't have any issues. And guys, after we go through the whole option deal on the truck here, um, you're gonna wanna stick around because I have an epic fail of an idiot situation for the shop. Okay, so what is this right here? What do you think this is? That, my friends, is a lift. I have officially achieved YouTube, automotive YouTuber goals. Goals on goals. We got a lift because we're pro and we're serious automotive YouTuber slash micro influencer and we'll get to that. Hmm. All right, guys, real talk, real deal. I got the mic, I got a whiteboard, class is in session. I need a marker. All right, so anyways, uh, you have the background of the truck. You know where the truck currently is standing, power-wise, reliability-wise. Actually, I don't know if I said it's reliable. Yes, super reliable. Has taken everything I've thrown at it, and I've been driving it like an idiot since I've purchased it. So, all right. This is an informational video and we're done screwing around. All right, so here's the deal. We're gonna go over this really, really quick. This is a simple procedure. I made this awesome chart here to explain to you everything on the truck. So it's cut and dry, it's clean cut. No more questions. If you have any questions after this, email me. <laughs> so anyways, we're gonna start base mods. This is the base, base stuff that I have done to the truck. Base mods I'm running are stage two package. Now that includes a five inch stainless steel exhaust. EGR upgrade and the easy link with the shift on the fly switch and everything necessary to run that. Okay, so stage two kit out of the way. Very first thing needed, stage two kit. On top of the stage two kit, I am running a full send switch. Now what the heck's full send switch? A full send switch is where I took my ABS traction control and I wired it to my up there switch via a fuse tap situation in the fuse box. Video also on that. Full send switch, number two. Number three. I rubbed off the three so you can't uh, see it, but three is right there. Rear diff lock full send kit. This is an SPE modification where it keeps your rear differential locked past 20 mile an hour. 
Now, I'm not going to explain all these deals. I'm just telling you what exactly is all on the truck. Okay, so moving from the base mods, we are going to follow the arrow on the chart over to fuel and air, the fuel and air section. Okay, so very first thing on the fuel and air section, I'm running the SPE Emperor Turbo Kit. Now this is a full send kit with a SPE 370 ball bearing turbo. Now the ball bearing turbo spools way faster than journal bearing, but like I said, we're not explaining stuff in this video. This is just what's on the truck. Moving down number two, I'm running the SPE intercooler piping. Now the stock inter intercooler piping is whack. Your truck isn't cool unless you got intercooler piping, right? Get it? Um, feeding the intercooler piping, moving down on the list, number three is the SNB open style intake. Now this is a massive monster of an intake situation. This takes your 17 kit, oops, sorry, I'm not explaining the parts. Massive, massive filter. So the intake feeds the intercooler piping, the intercooler piping feeds a turbo kit, and you are going full send F and R. Okay, moving down into the fuel and air section, we are going under the fuel performance. Before I do that, I do want to tell you that I'm running the stock intercooler. I have not touched the intercooler, it is factory. Uh, moving down fuel and performance, I'm running the Warren 55 over CP4. Now that's a 55% over CP4 over factory flowing. I keep explaining parts. But real quick, I do want to add in, they have a kit where you can build your own CP4. I opted to run their new reman unit with their modification already done to it. So my pump sitting on the bench, I have their new pump with their modification in the truck. That is the only major fuel performance modification that I'm running. I'm running stock injectors, stock lift pump, stock fuel lines, everything except the CP4 is 100% factory. Never touched it. Uh, moving down, fuel safety. Now this is kind of a big deal here. This isn't performance oriented. This is just safety oriented. I'm running the new SPE CP4 disaster prevention kit. Yes, I know there's probably a ton of you guys waiting to get these. These have surprised us like there's no tomorrow. This is an extremely popular kit and they're being made as fast as possible. I just want you guys to know that. Anyone waiting on one, you're gonna get it soon. CP4 disaster prevention kit is where I left off. Now moving down, SPE billet drain valve. That goes on the rear fuel filter housing underneath the bed. Necessary part, definitely. All right, follow the arrow. Following the arrow up, added performance mods. Now this has nothing to do with fuel and air, this is just kind of added performance stuff. Numero uno, SPE CCV reroute kit. No more oily soaked, cruddy air going into the intake. Number two, SPE internal catch can. Cheese grater, how do you spell grater? Don't know. This is a very, very cool thing. It now drips no more oil because there's an internal catch can. Also, starting to explain the parts. If I'd explain all these parts, I'd literally be here. This would be a 47 and a half hour video. But what I did was each of these little dealios has its own dedicated video where I explain what it is. So all these parts and their videos will be linked in the description. Um, number three on the added performance mods list, I am running the SPE High Flow Thermostat. Now, I see like I kind of have to explain them a little bit. Um, the SPE high flow thermostat, basically what happens on the Ford factory thermostat is it opens a little too late in the game to have proper cooling for the transmission, okay? So, mad scientist Dan made his own thermostat, boom, open sooner, keeps the transmission cool. Also, dedicated video, somewhere in, down there. Um, okay, follow the arrow, that's it for added performance ones. Follow the arrow to visuals, viz with a Z visuals, uh, number uno, numero uno. Number one, ready lift leveling kit. Now that is a full coil leveling kit. It's their budget kit. It comes with shock extensions. So you're using your old crappy ranchos or whatever's on your truck. Um, number two, hella wide wheels with muds. Okay, it's a 24 by 14 Cali off-road summit with a 35, 13, 50 R24 amp MT. Now for a cheap mud tire, those are smoking. I might do a dedicated video on those cheap mud tires because I really think that there's a lot of buzz around cheap mud tires and those are honestly pretty solid. Um, haven't, had any, haven't had any issues with them and they're lasting a while and I got a bunch of burnouts on them. Moving down the list, number three, murdered out taillights. Now I'm running the Recon black taillights. They do work with the blind spot radar thing or whatever it's called. And so far I've never had any problems with them. Moving down, number four, fishbowl delete. What the heck is that fishbowl delete? I tinted the whole truck. We've got tinted windshield, tinted windows, massive brow. Basically just blacked it out, looks sick. Moving down, number five, murked out third brake light. Okay, so what the heck is that? It's a recon black matching third brake light above the cab to match the tail lights. Both recon, number five and number three are both recon. Number six, bumper spacer to clear the hella wide wheels. 
Uh, it's a Wicked Customs bumper spacer to allow for the massive wide wheels on just a leveling kit. I did do a little trimming on the rear side of the fender. Now that is the cab side of the fender. Um, old Chevy guys, what do they call it? Like the NorCal fender mod or whatever you want to say. Basically, you just make some relief cuts and hammer it in like a savage. That's what we did. It works. Full clearance. Full crank on the turn. All right, guys. But that's about it. I wanted to go over this super quick because I just wanted to get you the info. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything I want to add in. Bald Eagles, American flag. Hit the subscribe button. Do it. What do you think of my chart? It took me a whopping five minutes to make that. And yes, uh, everything else in the truck is 100% stock. We are running the stock engine, stock injector, stock lift pump. A lot of people ask me about the lift pump. No lift pump on the truck. I'm running the factory Ford lift pump, which is holding up to 700 and whatever-ish horsepower we are running currently, supplying the 55 over CP4. But yeah, guys, all right, I know I went, I like sped through this, but that is the full mod list on my 2017 F250. The truck takes an absolute hammering on the YouTube channel. Um, not like a whistle and diesel, like literal hammering, but like a heavy flat foot on the throttle hammering. Um, there's someone walking outside my building right there. It's creeping me out. All right, so anyways, back to the saga of the shop failure. All right, so I uh, acquired a lift. Now that's a 10,000 pound two post lift without the base plate, it's the top plate option. So what we did was we went through, me and my dad, and we measured, we measured the ceiling, okay? So we measured plywood, the concrete, which we're figured, you know, yeah, it should, it should, should clear. If you, if you look at this, this, the slope of our ceiling kind of slopes towards this wall slightly. Now it's higher over there and it's lower up there. Very, very slight slope. Measured over there, we're like, yeah, perfect clearance. I think the lift's like 11.6 total overall height, 11.6 on the lift. Up there, we're at like over 12 something. We're like, oh, we're good. Came down here, pulled a rough measurement. We're like, oh, dude, plenty of, plenty of room. Okay, so upon further inspection, we don't have enough room. <laughs> so that brings me with two options. Option one, we build some kind of skylight in the ceiling, right? We build a nice bump out, you know, to fit the lift in where we want to put it, um, seal it off. There's a new metal roof on the top of this building. We fix that all up, make it, make it legit so it doesn't leak, obviously. Or option two, now let me know if there's anyone out there that has expertise in lift installation. So real quick, where the left post, left to right, depending on which way you're looking at it, where the left post would fall, X marks the spot. Okay, and you see all these cracks. There's a gathering of cracks kind of right there. Um, and I don't know if these are structural or just, you know, like a, like a light stress crack, and then there's one that runs there. So basically the, the plate of the lift will be sitting here um, and you kind of have cracks all over the place. So what I was going to do anyways is I was going to, you know, chip up the floor, put a nice, put a nice pad down for the lift post, you know, like a four by four by 12 or, or deeper uh, pad for the lift or do like a six by 14. There's a couple of different ways you can go about that. So since we have to redo the base for the lift anyways, what if we just, whenever we finish the base, we drop it the amount that we need to clear. So essentially the lift post will be sitting nine inches or four inches below the line of the old floor. So the base plate of that lift will be recessed down into the ground a hair four inches to allow for the proper clearance that we need to clear the roof. Is that an option? And I've been trying to find Google searches and forums you know, with, with someone else with this kind of a situation where they did that. I can't find nothing. Can you recess a lift, a two post lift, in the ground to clear a low ceiling? Is that a possibility or am I crazy? Add more fuel, add more air, more power, blow up your engine, blow up your transmission, or do a burnout or go fast. 